Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam I beat again with you doing political commentary for the media speaks. Behind me, fact cam, lest anybody think you're getting opinions on this show. You're not getting opinions, you're getting the correct views, and I'm giving you all of the information that you need to look it up. It's all backed up. It's all true. I'm going to do a few, a few stories tonight, not go on as long as I have. I don't know. I don't feel good today. I don't think I'm sick. I just, ugh, I don't know. I don't feel good. So I'm going to do the show, give you the facts, and then, I don't know, take mad amounts of vitamin C or something, just in case I am getting it. War on Thanksgiving, retailers opening day early for Black Friday. Zombie customers to camp outside store for bogus deals on electronic slave goods. I, does anybody else besides me absolutely hate the new layout of InfoWars? Alex, this is terrible. What the hell is wrong with you? It's a terrible site. What have you done to your site? Uh, it looks awful. I can go to Prison Planet now. I hope he doesn't do it to that one. Um, I want to tell people, I, I, regular viewers of the show know this. I have um, a tendency to go to Black Friday. And I'll tell you why. Not because I get up in the morning like a moron or don't have a Thanksgiving. At my other job, I work Monday through Thursday. And um, I'm a DJ. That means that when I'm working, Black Friday is beginning. It's in full gear when I get off at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. Behind where I work, is a massive shopping area. In front of where I work is a massive shopping area. It basically is one of the biggest, it, it used to be, on, for the two exits it took up, Belton Village used to be the, uh, the, it had the highest number of stores on any two exits anywhere in America. I don't know if that's still true, it might not be. But, um, the stores are open, and I just got off work. Well, the stores were always open at 2 in the morning, then I would go to them more often. But since they're already there, and I have to go Christmas shopping anyway, I will oftentimes go there. Have I ever saved a lot of money on anything? A time or two? Yes, usually not. Um, but I, I have nothing against people that go shopping all night long. That's you know Some people have fun doing that. When my dad was healthy, he used to love that kind. And um, I get it. I mean, I used to be fun to go out with Dan in the middle of the night and do some shopping sometimes. Yeah, it was great. This is different. This is people who are destroying their entire Thanksgiving, their culture, their heritage, whatever. Who cares? Because nobody cares about God anymore, right? They're destroying family time even to go to these ridiculous stores, even if you were saving money. There's something wrong with you if you do this. Listen to this. Thanksgiving is now under attack by retailers who want shoppers and workers to spend the holiday buying and selling electronic slave goods instead of spending time with their families. What do they mean by slave goods? They mean that they've been outsourced to countries like China. And when China builds these things, like the Apple store, they have a suicide net. I'm not kidding. They have suicide now at the uh, Apple factory. So many people have jumped off the buildings to their death because they have to work there. It's miserable. Um, let's go and support that instead of having uh, turkey dinner with our family. And uh, again, I'm, I don't like that I have to work on Thanksgiving. I understand being a DJ that that is very important because of the people that shop all night. Again, the people I've got no problem with. You're not going to be with, you're not going to, it is not family time at two in the morning. So it doesn't really bother me if you're shopping at two in the morning. It's not like you did some great injustice to the memory of Thanksgiving. It's now Friday. I've got no problem with that. This here is ridiculous. It says Toys R Us will open its doors at 5 p.m. Thanksgiving Day, while Target, Macy's, Sears, and other major retailers were open an hour later. Unfortunately, Target is one of the stores that I shop at every year because it's close to where I work. The issue with this, you're, I know what you're saying. Well, 
hey, um, if people don't want to spend it with their family, they shouldn't have to. My issue is what about the employees? This is ridiculous to ask them to do this. Again, I'm very open-minded. Some stores, and I, I don't see it in this article, it doesn't mean it's not in there. Um, they will hire temp workers only on Thanksgiving and Black Friday. And the only time their regular employees get the day shift is if they ask for it. Otherwise, it's temp agency. So everybody that's working gets signed up for it. I'm more open to that than I am what I know is happening to most of these employees, which is to say they're getting hosed and being forced to work on Thanksgiving Day. So that means that numerous shoppers will be spending Thanksgiving not at a dinner table, but rather at makeshift campsites outside big box stores waiting for them to open. Half of all customers plan to shop on Thanksgiving, with only 28% believing the holiday should be spent with their families, according to Austin-based research firm Accenture, A-C-C-E-N. Um, that is dreadful. I'm sorry, that's dreadful. If you can't find the importance of taking a day of thanks for your health, or your job, or your family, there's something wrong with you. Even if you don't believe in God, if you're not just happy and thankful to have your family around you and uh, what Thanksgiving represents, then there's something wrong with you. Um, both of my parents are dead, and uh, thankfully, I got to see them on most holidays. My dad was a nurse, which is another profession where somebody's got to be there. And uh, sometimes he would have to do it. I, I just, this is ridiculous. Fewer shoppers than in previous years, 28% down from 32 in 2014 and 41% in 13, believe that Thanksgiving should be spent with family versus shopping, the firm reported. It's getting worse and worse, in other words. While shoppers spend Thanksgiving fighting each other over the latest smartphone made in a Chinese suicide factory, the fact is the items on sale were given huge markups in the weeks before Black Friday to make the sales look spectacular in comparison. Black Friday is a hoax. What's that mean? I've got this, this shirt here. And uh, I like the Sandman. I really do. Some people, this is a black shirt. And I don't know if they're going to want it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sell it for $10 in July. However, I need this to look like it really went on sale. So right around Halloween, I'm gonna take this $10 shirt and I'm gonna make it an $18 shirt and nobody is going to buy it. However, I'm gonna drop it back down to $10 on Black Friday and you think you just got a deal. Did you get it? Even if shoppers were to score a killer deal on a single product, again, I've lucked into it before, they usually buy it alongside something with a 98% markup and showing up the retailers and not the shoppers win in the end. I've always found that to be true as well. Again, it doesn't bother me so much because I have to shop at some time and I'm already awake. It says for, And I don't shop at Walmart, so them being 24 hours doesn't help me any. Forget the doorbusters, coupons, and friends and family deals. U.S. shoppers on the whole will be paying more over the next few weeks than they do the rest of the year. This is from Bloomberg Business, and this is what their studies have shown them about Black Friday sales. Turns out, retail profit margins tend to be higher during the holiday period despite all the promotions. Meanwhile, in China, workers slave away at factories owned by Foxconn and others to keep up with America's demand for these consumer goods, often performing the same monotonous task for over 15 hours straight, no breaks, making $2 an hour. So tell me again how outsourcing is doing great things for our country. Tell me again how it's helping other cultures and that we should keep doing it. Tell me that these jobs shouldn't be in America. Now try to tell me how the hell Donald Trump is wrong. I'm sorry. He's got faults in him. I'm a libertarian. He's more of a uh, dominant conservative. But in any event, that's fine. He 
something has got to be done about that. And if, if, if that something means Donald Trump, then maybe it's time. I mean, really, look at this. These conditions cause many workers to jump to their death from the rooftops of the factories. And I, I said suicide nets now around all the facilities. All these workers wanted enough cash to pay for food and rent and said to bed home for their relatives who have less money, uh, CNET reported. It's fair to say that most of them, the only time they're ever holding an iPhone 5 is when they're putting one together. That's, that's what's being supported instead of uh, the historic holiday. The, uh, and if you don't care about history, your family and friends. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, this is interesting here because in the Target that I shop at is a Starbucks and a Pizza Hut. So far, Pizza Hut hasn't pissed me off, so they're, they're fine this year. <clears throat> Starbucks is not going to get my money at all during any of the holiday season. As a matter of fact, I don't go there very often anyway, but I do sometimes pick up those little um, uh, Starbucks overpriced coffee in a glass thing. Frappuccinos. I'm not going to go ahead and uh, I can't imagine when I'm going to buy Starbucks again. Kit Daniels wrote this. War on Christmas. Starbucks strips holiday images and coffee cups. It says Starbucks is removing a holiday-inspired images from its coffee cups and another example of political correctness gone amok. It's not bad enough that you can't have a cross on your cup anymore. Now they're not even using a Santa or anything that even alludes to the holiday. So they won't get this Christian at their um, overpriced coffee shop because they wanted to keep the Christ out of Christmas then now keep the Christian out of their shop. How's that? Unlike previous years where the cups came with holiday imagery, such as the vintage ornaments and hand-drawn reindeer, Starbucks new Christmas cups are now just plain red, creating a culture of belonging and inclusion and diversity is one of the core values of Starbucks. Each year during the holidays, the company aims to bring customers an experience that inspires the spirit of the season. That's what Starbucks said in the statement. It says uh, Starbucks will continue to embrace and welcome customers from all backgrounds and religions and stores around the world. No, what you did is just alienated most of the people shopping. This is a this is a, a, a great way to lose business because nobody has any problem prior to us capitulating the first time. Oh, you agreed to take Christ out of Christmas, but you, you, everybody knows it's ornaments. Well, I can't even have ornaments. Do you see where the slippery slope goes or am I doing this show for nothing? The company also claimed that switching to the plain red cups was a more, way, uh, more open way to usher in the holiday. In other words, holiday imagery and references to Christmas aren't, aren't politically correct and must be banned. I think in the age of political correctness, we've become so open-minded that our brains have literally fallen out of our head, former pastor Joshua Furenstein said in a viral Facebook video. Do you realize that Starbucks wanted to take Christ and Christmas off of their brand new cups? A Starbucks employee, Skylar Shelley, even told CBS that people who never come to Starbucks regularly would do so during the holiday season because they wanted the holiday cups. Wait, right there, if you don't believe me, go look it up. There's a link. You can see that it's true. It's on CBS News. If you you know believe them for everything else, take it with a grain of salt, I guess. But yeah, um, all jokes aside, I'm really not much of a pop drinker. I think it's poison. I drink it, unfortunately, with rum more often than I should. And uh, once... Once I'm able to, I'll probably just switch to drinking rum and coffee and eliminate it altogether. Not that coffee's a health food, but it is compared to pop. The issue is sometimes I'll buy a can of Coke or whatever when they have the little Santa Clauses on it. So while I didn't do it with Starbucks, I'll tell you one way for to lose my money if you're Coca-Cola, don't do the Santa cans this year. Go ahead and do a Starbucks and I won't drink any of it. It says uh, Starbucks has been producing the holiday cups since 97, but the decision to nix them follows the company's recent trend to dabble in social justice. Remember when they were trying to have race talks on the side of their cups and people quit going and ultimately got them to pull it off. 
Well, CEO Howard Schultz needs to hear from all of you listening to this. If you're sick of this, if you're tired of this, then contact Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz and uh, let him know you won't be going there this year and let him know why. Um, I ended up with a lot of uh, InfoWars articles, which I didn't plan on, but again, a lot of them are sourced on other articles anyway. Uh, update. Seventh grade assignment asks students to deny God exists or fail. Now, I'm going to give you a bit of a personal story with this, and uh, I can let you know that this kind of thing happens on multiple levels. When I was in college, I had a uh, uh, English teacher, Tom. Uh, uh, I forget his last name. I, I, I would so expose him if I could think of it, but he's the English teacher at Stark State College, and we had um, an assignment. And what I did was I proved the historicity of the resurrection. It's called Risen, the Historicity of the Resurrection of Jesus Christ. I proved that Jesus Christ rose from the dead without using the Bible to do it. I didn't use the Bible for anything other than to say this is what the Bible said. But I didn't prove it using the Bible at all and absolutely proved it. Well, he was a very anti-Christian sort of beast. And you want to know what this buzzer did? He gave it a B because I didn't alphabetize the bibliography. Yeah. Fair enough, didn't. I bet you he wouldn't have done it if I'd have been proven how awesome paganism was. I bet you he wouldn't have done it if I would have done something talking about how awesome Buddhism is nothing against Buddhists, but you know what I mean. This happens all the time. And if you don't think it was an amazing piece of work, go ahead and look it up. It's on Amazon. It's by me, Sam DeGange. Look it up. Risen, the historicity of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It was very well written. It got destroyed because I didn't alphabetize my sources. Well, it looks like it's happening at younger and younger levels now as we take uh, Christmas off of cops. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has announced he is inviting Jordan Woolley, the young girl in the story below, to the governor's mansion in admiration for her courage and conviction. So God bless you, Governor Greg Abbott. Now, make sure your cops quit jabbing people with needles for driving down the street. You might like you. Parents of students at a middle school in Texas are upset after a classroom assignment forced children to deny the existence of God or take a failing grade. Now, again, the science proves creation is the science does not prove that there isn't a creator science is painfully on the side of creationism which drives atheists crazy but even the most rudimentary research proves that and the only people arguing with me are people that just refuse to look at the data and just Woolley told school board members. Our teacher had started off saying that the assignment had been giving problems all day, and we were asked to take a poll to say whether God is fact, opinion, or myth, Woolley said. Well, what happened to the separation of church and state? You could argue even if you don't believe in Kray. Let's go down this rabbit hole for a minute. Atheists, uh, Satanists, uh, give me your ear again. You want the separation? church and state, then should this teacher in this school be drilled for bringing God into the classroom? See, now, now even atheists are agreeing with me. See how it works? 
She told anyone who said fact or opinion is wrong and that God is only a myth. Of course, she knew. Now, obviously, she's an English teacher because she knows nothing about science. Wooley described how the teacher went on to tell students who believed in God that they were completely wrong. Whenever we asked why, we were led to believe he was true. If he is untrue, she said to ask our pastors, Wooley. She also described to board members how the teacher asked her to prove God's existence, at which point the student referenced the Bible and stories about people who died and went to heaven only to come back and tell their stories. Um, you can also make sure she reads uh, Gigoinia. It says, somebody send this teacher a, uh, if somebody sends this teacher, because if I do it, it's going to look contrived. If someone sends this school or this teacher a copy of my book, my 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 story, my my piece that I wrote, it's not really a book, the piece I wrote. If you send that to her, I will promote your favorite charity on here, and I will donate the money that you paid to my book to your favorite charity. I'm not trying to make money on this. I'll actually lose money when royalties are done doing it this way, but that's fine. If, if somebody does it, if someone does it, count me in. She wants proof, we'll give her proof. The distraught student also related how emotional tensions in the class were elevated, describing how one of her friends grew so and says she threw everything off her desk and onto the floor. Another child had asked if the teacher could try to put that we believe on paper, and she said, <coughs> you can do it if you want to get the problem wrong, and you'll fail the paper if you do. And it was supposed to create debate. No, it was supposed to slander God. Because if it was about debate, then people that disagreed with you would not get a failing grade. Because I'm sorry, I haven't seen anything that tells me that that wasn't the case. They want you to say that God is an opinion. That is an opinion, and it's a wrong one. Friends, you're listening to the correct views. We've got three stories left to get to. I just want to say real quick, make sure you look us up on Tumblr. Um, we're on Tumblr, not on Facebook anymore. Uh, on Tumblr, we, um, we, we need people sharing the videos, telling people we're out here. Helps a lot. Also, go to stickerjunkie.com. Put in the, uh, the correct views in the uh, promo code. You're going to save a fortune. It's either correct views or the correct views. I think it's both. Um, you're going to save on your stickers. And you're going to get amazing looking stickers. Do me a favor. Remember sticker too. Um, Theguardian.com outrage over Holocaust comments intensifies as Netanyahu meets Kerry. What's interesting on this is, I guess the stories are all tying together here. The attack on confirmed history. We know, for instance, the Jesus Christ thing. We know this. We know that the statements that were made here by Benjamin Netanyahu are in fact historically correct. Even if it angers Palestinians, um, what else is true? Um, I, is El Sam's pro-Jew? He's a Jew lover. He's, you know what? I'm indifferent to whether you're a Jew or not. I am so sick of what sounds like a bunch of fascist bastards in the libertarian movement to blame everything on Jews. Jews this, Jews that. Zionists are dreadful. But they aren't in Jews any more than um, Westboro Baptists are Christians. I don't care if you're Jewish or not. I can't think of anything I care about less. Um, sometimes people will bring up that certain very perverted sects of um, Jewry will, ha will have historically sacrificed people and uh, use their blood, particularly the blood of Christians. That has happened throughout history in perversions of the Jewish faith. But if you talk about it, then you're then you're anti-Jew. Then you hate Jews. Then you know just because I said that now, everybody, I'm going to get every Jewish person on here and say, "Oh my God, I thought you were our friend. Now you hate us." I still don't care. Point is, most Jews are not out here drinking blood. Did it happen? Yes. It makes Jews angry that it happened. Then I'm sorry, but the history says that it happened. Well, 
Benjamin Netanyahu gave facts regarding the Holocaust that angered people all over the world. Well, they're just going to have to be angry because Benjamin Netanyahu is correct. <coughs> He's met the secretary, the U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry in Berlin amid a continuing storm of criticism over remarks. The Israeli Prime Minister made claiming that the Palestinian, Palestinian Grand Mufti of Jerusalem had suggested the genocide of Jews to Adolf Hitler. Do you want to know something? He did. The Grand Mufti of Jerusalem did give the idea to Hitler. Many other people had given the idea of genocide in such a way to Hitler. Um, he was partially influenced by the writings of Aleister Crowley. So we know that a number of people influenced this mindset onto Adolf Hitler, who was drug addicted, who was uh, syphilis ridden, and who had to have been one of the worst leaders in all of history. If he had listened to his generals, unfortunately now we would all be speaking uh, German. So thankfully he didn't. Uh, Hitler gave the war away because he was an idiot, thank God. But Netanyahu is getting backlash here for saying that he somehow is letting Adolf Hitler off the hook or that the Grand Mufti is responsible for the death of everybody that died in the Holocaust. He's trying to blame it on the Palestinians. That's not what he's doing at all. He's pointing out a very reliable, very well-rooted historical fact, and that is that the Grand Mufti had suggested to Hitler that he kill the Jews. I'm sorry, it's true. So Netanyahu tried to roll back on his remarks that Hitler had been persuaded to initiate the Holocaust by the Second World War Palestinian leader, which he made in a speech to the World Zionist Congress. Well, that's because what they were saying was that, again, that he was persuaded by the Palestinian leader to do that. That's not what Netanyahu said. What Netanyahu said was he was one of the people who suggested it to Hitler. It was still Hitler's idea. He didn't need much persuading. He, again, Aleister Crowley and other people, he had already read and had this in his mind to do. If you read Mein Kampf, you can see that he had thought about it prior to meeting the Grand Mufti. That is very much true. The Grand Mufti did not give him the idea, but he did reinforce the idea that he was already leaning towards. That is historical fact, friends. Instead, historians and media commentators continued to weigh in uh, in helping cause Holocaust denialism. That's not true at all. Look, point is, that is exactly what the Grand Mufti did. He suggested that Hitler killed the Jews. That Hitler didn't want to exterminate the Jews at the time. He wanted to expel the Jews, said Netanyahu. That is true. And Haj Amin al Hassini went to Hitler and said, if you expel them, they will all come here to Palestine. According to Netanyahu, Hitler then asked, well, what should I do with them? And the Mufti replied, burn them. I'm sure that he did. I mean, there has been no love loss there forever. There have been instances where Israeli people have done dreadful things to innocent Palestinians. I get it. That doesn't change historical records. What happened to sex? Paul Craig Roberts, Western civilization is in collapse. We have way too much sex everywhere you look. However, the sex that quote unquote matters is experiencing problems here. Hear me out on this. This is odd. Every public and private institution in Western, in, in every Western country, with the sole exception of Iceland, is corrupt. Government at every level is corrupt. The courts and judicial, judicial systems are corrupt. Justice is not existent. Financial systems are corrupt. It goes on and on and on and on. But it said not all corruption is money motivated. Spiritual corruption is all over. We're seeing that obviously everywhere we look. Well, listen to this. It said um, what we're experiencing with sex. He remembers when sex was romantic. And again, I am not the most sexual, moral person that ever lived. I may be one of the most sexually immoral people you've ever heard talk. You know what? 
still scoop up my wife and make love to her more often than I do anything kinky. Um, I, I don't, I don't buy into this idea that it's somehow, um, I don't want to word this too. I don't buy into this idea that sex is a, a one trick pony as it were, but listen to this. This is bothersome. Apparently the days of romantic sex are gone. Today's sex is about two people or more getting each other off. Sex has been reduced to an orgasmic act. The Ashley Madison website, where wives and husbands sign up for extramarital sex with strangers, testifies to the purely orgasmic character of sex today. And again, if you're if you're a couple that's a swinger, then you don't want to make love to the third person. That's going to be a problem. That's a very bad idea. But why are we treating everybody we're with as if they were a fling in the middle of some fantasy that you're finally getting to live where we live? Why is it that that's now become the be all of sex? It said an article in Cosmopolitan explains sex is fun. If it weren't, we would never bother leaving the house to meet new people to have sex with, and we'd all just masturbate instead. But what this person is saying is that that's all anyone cares about anymore. And I've seen this to be the case. It's a very narcissistic drive. And again, have I ever had sex just because it felt good? Yes, I have. That's not even what this article is talking about. This article is talking about this being the epitome of what sex is now in the West, in America, in, in the Western civilized world, if you want to call it that. Um, how to get your man hard and keep him coming back for more in Cosmopolitan articles. And uh, it talks about them pushing BDSM culture. Well, a lot of that's because that stupid book was sold. But this was a lot more bothersome to me where it says the Playboy magazine has announced that it is ceasing the publication of photos of nude women. The ambiguity of pornography has destroyed the thrill and excitement of the female body and made such images passe. Men are being desensitized and the female body is losing arousing power. Perhaps this explains why there is a demand for a dominatrix to put couples inside of giant balloons and it goes on to list that very weird sexual fantasy. My point being, first of all, we don't have enough readers to keep magazines going to begin with. And Playboy has a very high readership, not just the pictures. It really is true. People have always read their articles. Well, they're now taking the new pictures out so that they can continue to exist and sell because nobody reads anymore. And they're not putting the new pictures in because they're going to get more people just from the readership than they will from the pictures because people don't care about seeing artistic nude women anymore. They care about porn. They care about, uh, you know, watching really weird sex. And again, I've got nothing against any of that, but I have something against this somehow the, the very, uh, are, are the artful side of sex is gone. That's why strip clubs now are all about twerking. There's no art in them. There's very rarely burlesque shows. There's very rarely sex plays and all the fun stuff that used to be in it. Now it's just, can she twerk and what can I get away with with her? And I see that all the time and it's bothersome. It's very, very bothersome. It says women experience the gift of orgasm more readily through clitoral stimulation. And he goes on to complain about shaving. I don't give a damn about shaving. Who cares? Feminism taught women promiscuity so that no man wants to marry them because so many of the wedding guests have already slept with the bride. Promiscuity brought female empowerment. The woman can now be on top and set the pace while the man restrains himself by thinking of distracting subjects. If he can last long enough and she can get off, then he's a fantastic lover. The emotional side of sex with its components of love and commitment is still present, just in the background. Sex is about pleasurable physical feelings. And he goes on, you can read the rest of it from there. We've covered the sex dolls all the time. I was the one who said they should not be banned in the UK. If you want to have sex with a sex doll, then I, whatever. Not that weird, friends. But okay, whatever. Um, maybe I, maybe if she looked like Tani Katine in Witchboard or something. All right, friends, I'm being facetious, but you get the point. That's a very interesting piece in that article, is that there's so little love of beauty in sex anymore that artistic pictures aren't even desired by anybody anymore. And it's, uh, it's bothersome.
Read the article, it's even more bothersome. Friends, that brings us to the Dumdy. Dumdy of the day, that's right. Oh, yes. Video. White people refuse to say N-word in rap lyrics. Paul Joseph Watson covering the uh, the work of uh, Mark Dice. And again, I, uh, Mark Dice and I agree sometimes and sometimes we don't. He was cool. He was in my movie, Bilderberg, Why It Matters to Me, Looking Up Three. Um, I like Mark Dice. I've always liked Mark Dice. So, but he can sometimes be a bit close-minded too. Uh, the singer of our band, Passing Time, Serenity, uh, is a, a doll entertainer. She's a dancer. And she's also an avid libertarian who has done a lot for uh, libertarianism in terms of, even in the music that we write with Passing Time, has a very strong pro-liberty base. The lyrics in our music is not at a five grade, fifth grade reading level or whatever it is that most music is at these days. And uh, Mark Dice would never give someone like that the time of day. So I, I have a little bit of a problem with him there. But if you ask me if I like Mark Dice, I like Mark Dice a lot. I watch him all the time. I'd love to have a beer with the guy. I, I like to see him again. More power to Mark Dice. I'm just saying I think he has a very narrow view of the world. But having said that, he also has done a lot for freedom in exposing the extreme levels of stupidity that exist within our world. And uh, no one does it better than he does. I mean, I've got the dunce cap of the month where I expose all the idiots. But, I mean, he gets the idiots on camera. And I, I, shout out to him. He's been stolen. His work's been stolen by uh, tonight's show and so many people taking his idea. But uh, this is one of his best ones. It's dumb the other day going to these people. Is it ever okay for white people to say the N-word? Not according to beachgoers in San Diego, the vast majority of whom refuse to recite rap lyrics in public. According to a recent study, hip-hop is the most influential American music in the last 50 years, carrying more clout than rock, and although its popularity with white people seems to be greater than ever before, most of them are deathly afraid of singing along with the lyrics to many of today's biggest hits. Well, I can tell you why, because every other word is an N-bomb. Uh, does it offend me? No. I'm going to tell you something interesting. I don't care if you're a Jew. I don't care if you're a black person. I don't care at all. And I get you. I'm going to get, if you're a black person that agrees with me on this, do me a favor and leave the comment. Because what I'm going to say ends up something you're not supposed to say, but it's the correct views now, isn't it? The reason that I don't go to more black owned establishments is because I hate hip hop, not rap. I love rap. Hip hop. And I despise vocal running. It's called Melissa Bob. You know, the way that you say, oh, oh, baby, baby. Ow. That makes me want to shake a baby while kicking a kitten through a house fan and watching revenge porn. I hate that sound. I don't care if you're Christina Aguilera, who the last time I checked was quite white. I don't care if you're Beyonce. It's terrible and i hate it i have nothing against black people black culture i don't care what the color of your skin is i hate what is commonly called black music i can't stand it it's awful to me how many black people do not go to white owned clubs because you freaking hate something about white music and I don't like to make put music on colors because one of my favorite entertainers of all time is Cab Calloway, and he's quite black. But in I'm speaking the way people speak in terms of white music, black music, we'll go with it. You can't stand Metallica. There's something about the, the sound of that music that gives you a headache. You don't care if someone's white. You could care less if they're Jewish, if they're Christian. You just... I'm speaking to somebody, ain't I? But no, you can't say that. You're not supposed to say that. Um, now music has gotten so bad that white people are listening to music that has lyrics so bad that they're afraid to recite what the lyrics are. And that's ridiculous to me. Um, 
Anything I listen to, I will happily recite the lyrics to. And if he didn't ask me to read, read them, I'd have read them. I didn't write them. I'm not the one saying nigga this, nigga that. That's Nicki Minaj. There are no end bombs in passing time music. Search though you may. Why? Because I think it's moronic. That's why. Explaining that the goal was to put an end to this double standard that white people can't sing along with rap music, Mark, tried, Mark Dice tried to get one man to recite the lyrics, but he immediately refused, stating, oh, not even a chance, not with words like that. Asked whether he would recite the lyrics to the support the First Amendment, another man responded, I'm not going to stand here and drop the end bomb or anything. The young woman then refuses to read lyrics from the Nicki Minaj song, Nicki Garbage. Well, that's kind of aggressive. Well, another man says, that's too much. I don't want to say that word, a woman responded. I can't say the N-word, I'm white. And yet, it's all over the music. Yet they choose to go to clubs and play it all the time. And, you know, and I get the fiction side of it. I'm a death metal fan. I really like death metal. And again, I've already said before, I was Christian. But there's fact and there's fiction. Now, I know some black metal is real, but... That's another topic for another day. My point is, most like bands like Obituary, it's fiction. It's fiction. White Zombie, it's fiction. I don't have a problem with that. But when everything is about the same few or four or five vulgar words repeated with different inflection, it just gets old. And uh, these people, obviously, as dumb as a box of rocks as well, getting a dumb the other day. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views, brought to you by Mike McLaughlin, M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. Make sure you look him up on Facebook.com and let him know you heard about his writings from The Correct Views. You can also donate to the show at The Correct Views at Hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. Good night, friends. God bless.